Instead, trying to find a match for Polyphemus, which is the host of the Moon Pandora, I checked the Exoplanet Archive, and this week our carbon copy is HD28185B. Sorry about the name. Okay. So HD28. No, we're terrible. We shouldn't be allowed to name anything. Astronomers <laughs> should not be in charge of naming things. 100%. Have you ever wondered what it's like to discover a brand new world? In the last three decades, we've found over 5,000 planets outside our solar system called exoplanets. I'm Dr. Jesse Christensen, the lead scientist at the NASA Exoplanet Archive. This is Explore Exoplanets, The Discoverers, a series where I interview the brilliant minds behind the discovery of brand new planets. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also listen to it as a podcast. Uh, head to Apple Podcasts or Google Play and take us with you on your morning commute. If you're listening to us, you can also watch us on YouTube where you'll find some bonus graphics to help explain what my guest and I are talking about. And we are returning with Dr. Ashley Shontos, who is the Henry Norris Russell Postdoctoral Fellow at Princeton University. Welcome back, Ashley. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Okay, we've just established that your favorite fictional planet, you totally misread the assignment, and you've chosen a moon, <laughs> uh, is Pandora from the Avatar movies. Um, so Pandora, uh, it's a moon, it's a habitable moon that's orbiting a gas giant planet. So the gas giant planet is in the habitable zone of its star, and this is a moon. <clears throat> so if people will remember a previous episode of Explore Exoplanets with David Kipping, uh, go check out that episode if you haven't listened to it yet. People have been thinking about exomoons for a long time, but we haven't found any yet. Um, so let's talk about Pandora with the knowledge that we have not found any exomoons yet. Okay, so Pandora is orbiting a gas giant called Polyphemus. Uh, and that gas giant is orbiting a star, which it turns out, if you pay really close attention, is Alpha Centauri. Um, the Alpha Centauri triple system is the closest star system to us. And Polyphemus is orbiting Alpha Centauri A, one of the very sun-like stars uh, in that system. Uh, it's uh, Pandora is the fifth moon of this gas giant, Polyphemus. Um, Pandora is slightly smaller than the Earth. Um, so the surface gravity is about 20% lower than Earth's. So if you remember the movie, you know, the creatures are all quite tall and willowy. That's in part because of the lower surface gravity. So you can, you can stretch more and you get these long, lanky creatures. On the other hand, the atmosphere is shown to be much denser than Earth's atmosphere uh, because there's all these heavy gases. And in particular, some of those gases are poisonous. Uh, there's carbon dioxide, there's xenon. Um, and so when you see the humans on the planet, they're always wearing some kind of space suit. But other than that, it's got continents, it's got oceans, it's got ice caps, it's got volcanic activity. Uh, and something that Ashley alluded to is that it has solar eclipses almost every day. Um, can you talk to us about the solar eclipses and why you, that makes you enjoy Pandora so much? I mean, were you, were you around for the recent solar eclipse? We'd actually just gotten back from a trip to Australia like two days before, and I did not think I could get my family in a car to Texas in that time. So we missed the previous one. That's fair. I mean, it's pretty magical. Um, we only had, uh, I want to say, a 90% eclipse okay. here in New Jersey, but mm -hmm. um, I was told to, you know, instead of looking up, well, it's kind of this like, this kind of shadowy, like this pink shadow. I can't, it's hard to explain. It's like not, I wasn't, we weren't in complete darkness, but it was this like kind mm -hmm. of eerie, beautiful vibe and everybody, everything is quiet and you look at the ground and you can see all the tiny little eclipses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... People got really creative with that effect this time. I feel like much more so than the 2017 solar eclipse. This time you saw a lot of people making like images out of pinholes so that they could create like 2024 in pinholes on the ground. Like people yeah. got, people got really creative this time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, imagine if you had one every day, would it just get boring? You'd be like, uh, solar eclipse. <laughs> yeah, probably. But it's really hard to, yeah, it's really hard to think that. I think my, my neighbors might think I'm a little crazy. I, you know, laid a, bla uh, a blanket out. I had my cat sitting on my blanket with me and I'm actually <laughs> sitting there speaking of poking holes. I had a paper plate and I was just taking one of my nail files and just poking and people were just like walking by. Like, what <laughs> is she doing? What is this crafts, person doing with her cat on the blanket? I was waiting, yeah, exactly. <laughs> while I was waiting for the, not the nearest totality that we had, but yeah, okay. pretty fun. Right. Okay, so I could understand why, you know, an interesting encounter with a recent eclipse makes you think of Pandora when you think of favorite fictional planets. Uh, okay, 
So let's talk about how we're going to get from Pandora, which is an exomoon, and we have no exomoons, to some kind of real world analog. So I mentioned that the, the, the planet that the moon is orbiting, Polyphemus, is orbiting Alpha Centauri A. Now, we've actually been studying the Alpha Centauri system for a long time because it's our closest stellar neighbors. So any planets we find there are our closest planetary neighbors and the easiest for us to, to measure anything more about, to understand anything about their atmospheres, their surfaces, their interiors. These are the closest stars to us, so the, they would be the most exciting planets. And there was actually a candidate uh, rocky planet announced around Alpha Centauri B, which is the other sun-like star in the triple. Um, it was a really exciting story, actually. It was like Christmas Eve, uh, this, this rocky planet around our nearest stellar neighbor was announced and everyone was rejoicing. Uh, and then uh, not too long later, it got refuted as a false positive. Um, so unfortunately, no planets around a Alpha Cent A or B at the moment, but the third star in the system, Proxima Centauri, which is a, a, a red star, an M dwarf, uh, quite far away from the two sun-like stars, does have a rocky planet in its habitable zone and two more candidates. Um, but none of them are really like Polyphemus and certainly not like Pandora. So I decided not to go with the Alpha Centauri system for our carbon copy this week. Instead, trying to find a match for Polyphemus, which is the host of the moon Pandora, I checked the Exoplanet Archive and this week our carbon copy is HD 28185B. Sorry about the name. Okay. So HD we're not very creative. No, we're terrible. We shouldn't be allowed to name anything. Astronomers <laughs> should not be in charge of naming things, 100%. Um, so HD 28185B, um, I actually dug pretty deep for this one. It was discovered in 2001. Uh, so it's one of the OG giant planets. Um, you know, the first were being discovered around like sun, like the first were being discovered around sun like stars in 1995. So this is only six years later. Uh, and in fact, HD 28185B was the first giant planet found on a wide orbit like Polyphemus that was on a circular orbit uh, instead of the dozen or so that had been found with very high eccentricities. So it was the most Polyphemus-like planet or, or Jupiter-like planet even that had been found to date. Uh, it has a period of 385 days, which is pretty close uh, to our own period of 365 days here on Earth, so comfortably in the habitable zone. Uh, it's big. Uh, it's nearly six times the mass of Jupiter, so actually not too far off of KOI4, which we've been oh. talking about, which was five times the mass of Jupiter. Um, comfortably still a planet, though, not a round dwarf yet. Um, and so we have more than two decades of data on HD 28185b at this point. Uh, it's one of our OG giant planets. How is it the same as Polyphemus? Uh, well, it's orbiting a star like Alpha Centauri A, which is also very much like the sun, a sun-like star. Uh, it's a gas giant and it's in the habitable zone. And one thing I wanted to add is all of our giant planets have moons around them, dozens of moons, hundreds of moons in Saturn's case. Uh, so the idea that you could have a gas giant around a sun-like star that doesn't have moons is almost more weird than the idea of a gas giant that does have moons. So I'm pretty sure safe money would be that HD 28185b has moons. I can't say if they're like Pandora, but pretty sure it has moons. How is it not like Polyphemus? Okay, well, it's not orbiting Alpha Sen, uh, which would be amazing. And I'm still crossing my fingers for all-like planets <laughs> orbiting Alpha Sen at some point. Um, it's not too far away. So Alpha Sen, as I said, is our closest neighbor. HG 28185b is about 100 light years away. So relatively speaking, in the in this context of our galaxy, that's actually still pretty close. Uh, but other than that, it's actually pretty much like Polyphemus and could definitely have a rocky planet like a rocky moon like Pandora. Uh, so that's this week's carbon copy of, of Polyphemus, the host planet of Pandora, HD 28185b. Nice. Okay. So talking about Pandora, talking about Polyphemus, is there a fictional planet you'd really like to find, Ashley? And how would you do it? I mean, I feel like you already said that this uh, basically with Alpha Sen. Alpha Sen, um, yes. Yeah, sure. it's it's the closest one. So if there was any sort of advanced kind of like this is obviously decades down the road, you know, trying mm -hmm. to communicate or find signal, like this is the very the the nearest most feasible place that we can visit. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, it's just it's. For that reason alone, I think that makes it a very, you know, it's still, I mean, even though we don't know of anything around Alpha Sun, that's why I think we still continue to follow it up with this. Yeah, it would be <laughs> revolutionary to find rocky planets around those stars. Um, yeah. How would, how do you think we should hunt for rocky planets around Alpha Sun? Do you have a, a method you think will work? Ooh, I think that the upcoming imaging missions of flagship missions like Roman and mm -hmm. Habitable Worlds Observatory are ideal for this type of system because mm -hmm. they're so close that um, for 
those are systems we can actually, when we image them, we can see planets that are in or near the habitable zone of their host star. So they're, they're not actually blocked by the star, like some of the ones that are more far away. So they're very right. well separated from their host star. Yeah. Um, Alpha Stand is almost too bright for habitable worlds observatory <laughs> because they, because these are, these stars are so close and so bright. Um, you actually get a lot of flux from them. And if you have a big telescope, like Habitable Worlds Observatory is currently slated to be something like six meters. If you have a big telescope, you're gonna saturate your detector, totally blow out your CCD uh, in less time than it takes to read out the camera. So when we're defining the architecture of Habitable Worlds Observatory, for instance, one of the requirements is that we need to be able to read out fast enough to look at Alpha Sentinel. <laughs> I was going to say, I take that back. I don't want to kill the, I don't want to kill the telescope. <laughs> uh, adding, adding additional requirements at this stage is quite onerous. I can imagine that's okay. That makes sense. Cause as I said, I was using the NASA Exoplanet Archive for specifically for Habitable Worlds Observatory targets. And mm -hmm. I noticed that Alpha Sun was not on that list. And I was like, how is this possible? Right. Um, but they, now we they're, know. they're really bright. <laughs> Super uh, bright. Okay, it's time to answer some questions from the audience. Uh, we have one this week and we're so glad that you're all listening and sending in your questions. Uh, this question is, since most stars are binaries, does that make planets like our Earth rare? Um, this is a really interesting question because a lot of all of our thinking about planet demographics and planet occurrence rates over the last two decades has really focused on the question of single stars. Um, partly that's because a lot of the ways we detect planets prefer to look at single stars. Like if you have more than one star, it washes out the signal, it confuses the signal. It's really quite hard to look for planets around binary stars in most cases. Um, so almost all of our thinking has been about single stars, but our, our listener makes a very good point. A huge fraction of stars are not single stars, they're in multiple systems. So for stars like the sun, it's 40 to 50% of stars like the sun are in binary or higher order, like triple or quadruple systems. So it's only about 50%, half of sun-like stars that are single, like our sun. So that begs the question, can you have an Earth-like planet in a multiple system? Uh, we don't really know the answer to that yet. It kind of depends how far apart the stars are. If the stars are far enough apart that you have, you know, a dynamically stable habitable zone, then you could still have an Earth there. Um, and the jury's still out on like the whole process of planet evolution or formation and migration. Can you still end up with a planet there? So to sum up, I don't think Earths are rare because a lot of sun-like stars are in binaries. Earths could still exist in binaries, uh, but it is a really, really important point that a lot of stars are in binaries, not single stars, and we need to think about that when we're thinking about how many Earths there are. So thank you to our listener for sending that in. That is a great question, and I was actually thinking of it from a pure numbers perspective, right? There's billions of stars in our galaxy, and the one thing Kepler told us is that if you look up at any you know, star in the night sky, there's probably at least one or more planets. So if yeah. there's at least one or more planets around all of the stars and there's billions of stars, it, you just got to feel like it's likely that they're, you know, they're out there. They're not as rare as we think. Yeah, I, you know, we, we're still not there yet, but I'm really sure we will find an Earth-like planet around a sun-like star in the next decade or two. <clears throat> okay, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, if you want more out of this world astronomy content, please join us for our next episode uh, and like and subscribe to Explore Exoplanets. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where you can send us your burning questions about exoplanets, real or fictional, and beyond for us to tackle in an upcoming episode. Thank you again for being on the show, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everyone. <laughs>